Hey, welcome to step two. This is the ideal meal. We're going to be learning about what to eat and how much. And that way, your food will become your medicine. And if you're really good, your food will look like this. Mmm, yummy. Okay, so a couple of notes here. The best meal plan is the one you stick to, okay? In a world of fancy diets and all of these different things that I call designer health, it is hard to find a meal plan that you can stick to. So the whole point of ideal meal is to help guide you, right? To choose the right food in the right portions. Two very important things, and it's gonna be simple. So a big part of why we wanna do ideal meals right here is to ensure you get all the proper nutrients, and it's gonna help you stay active by giving you more energy. So proper nutrition is the most effective way to get more energy, and that is the prize. So let's take a look at what the ideal meal is, okay? And we're gonna go more in depth to this in the next part. But as you can see right here, in each meal, right, Two servings of vegetables, one to two servings of protein, one serving of carbohydrate, one serving of fat, and one serving of miscellaneous. Now, we're gonna go, like I said, more in depth into these, into the next part. Before we talk about what to eat, we're gonna talk about how much, and that is these numbers right here. How much of the foods, all right? And it's these little things that make a big difference. So, and let me just explain. The, the how much you eat is consistent. That's set in stone. But what you choose, which we'll cover in part three, that's up to you. And that's why the meal plan is custom, and that's why you'll have a higher chance of sticking to it, because you're picking the foods, not me. And then the most, I get to ask this question probably more than anything, and that's, that's why I have included this, is how much food do I eat? How do I know, right? And I, and I borrowed this from Precision Nutrition. We will use the rule of hand, which I'm gonna explain on the next topic. In this way, you can have a quick and easy way to portion out your food, and we know, or maybe you don't know, but proper portions is the most important aspect of maintaining a healthy body weight. And people struggle with portions a lot. And so this rule of hand, it's a quick and easy way to find out if you're eating the correct amounts of food. So let's go ahead and take a look, right? So we're talking about serving size, all right? And they're all based on specific measurements. And I'm pretty sure you don't carry around a food scale. But we need a way to estimate. So we're gonna use the rule of hand, which basically is the palm of your hand is equal to one serving. <laughs> and when I teach people this, they're like, my hands are different sizes. Yes, but they're all roughly the same. And if you're a smaller person, smaller hands, maybe a little bit less food. Okay, so this is just a quick and easy way. So here's how you use it. You're using your palm as a scale. No, you're not putting the food in your hand. You're putting it over, okay? And like I said before, one serving size is about the size of your palm, and it's less than one half inch thick. I've had people joke like, oh, I have a stack of burgers, you know, <laughs> as high as the ceiling in my hand. Okay, now to do it, obviously that's not one serving. Now to do it, you wanna place your hand over the food and make sure it covers the food completely. That's one serving. So you won't be able, I'm gonna show you the next page some examples, but you won't be able to see the food. There's not like food sticking out out here. That's gonna be a little bit too big. Okay, so let me take some examples and this is uh, my lovely cooking. So this is two servings of protein. So as you can see right here, that's sort of my food, yum. Now look at my hand, right? So you still see how there's all this food sticking out? So that means it's more than one serving. And then I kind of moved my hand over and you see this food sticking out, that was already covered. So that's about two servings. I mean, realistically, looking at that more in depth, that might be one and a half, but like I said, it's not about perfect, it's about effort, it's just trying it, okay? And then up next, we got some dried fruit, okay? And you guys can see here, right? There's the food. I put my hand over it, you can't see it at all. And then what I've included here is this is the scale weight of that food, right? And this 51 ounce or 51 grams, that's one serving. So actually the rule of hand for dry food, fruit gave me a perfect serving size. And that's based on net weight, like literally using a scale. And last but not least down here, we have some fats, which I did. This is like a trail mix. You got some fruits and nuts in there. And I did the same thing. I put one serving size, it's nice and flat, right? And I covered it with my hand. And then you can see down here, that it's exactly one ounce. And I did not pre-measure this, okay? I just literally used my hand and then put it on the scale. So the rule of hand, like I said, just right here, and I've actually kind of proven it with these scale numbers is, it's a very effective way to manage your serving size. So you guys gotta keep up with your portions. Just use your hand, it's quick and easy. You can use it in a restaurant, you can use it at home, use it at a party, whatever you need, you can use it right away. Okay, and that's how you get proper portions. And then in the next part, we're gonna be looking at each one of the foods in the ideal meal that you can see here. We're gonna be looking at what's on your plate, specific foods for each one. All right, I'll see you then. 
Hey, welcome to part two, what's on your plate? We're gonna be discussing each one of the categories of the ideal meal. Now, most important word of this entire part is enjoy. I highly, highly recommend you choose foods that you enjoy, okay? Because you're gonna be able to follow that meal plan and that's the entire premise of this three steps to a healthy body weight program is it's what? Custom, because you get to choose the foods. Now, you're gonna be choosing from this preferred food list that I have written, and I want to honestly drive home, folks, I slaved on this food list, and that's not just a cheap parlor trick, I really mean I did, and I chose foods that would be considered healthy by just about anyone, okay? And then once we dive into those, we're gonna have a brief discussion about the science, how much of each one, and then what the foods are. Now, I just wanna print that out, I just want you guys to look at this real quick, the list, okay? So, I have it organized by, you know, the types, carbohydrates, vegetables, fats, and then, you know, on the other side, proteins. Now these other ones, the snacks, the dressings, that's miscellaneous, non-water drinks, seasoning, supplements, those are miscellaneous. But I want you to look at this part here, I'm gonna zoom in, add your own, right? In no way, shape, or form is this the only foods that you can eat. I want you guys to explore adding your own foods, okay? So you don't see a kind of carbohydrate you like adding, you don't see a carbohydrate that you like on here, add it, but don't add ice cream, okay? You don't need ice cream. All right, so up first we'll be looking at protein. And protein is the building block of muscle. It is considered by just about everyone that you need protein. High protein diets are recommended unless you have some rare exceptions. So ask your doctor, of course. Now look at this portion. One to two servings of protein per meal. Most people struggle with this. And the reason they struggle with this is they don't necessarily understand completely what has protein and what doesn't have protein. So we're gonna look at two sources of protein animal products, and protein from plants. That's pretty much the only place you're gonna get protein, folks. And you can say here, I prefer a mix of both, and I recommend you to try both. Obviously, with every meal, you can't have, well, animal products, you can't have meat at every meal. But let's go ahead and look at some of the preferred proteins, okay? These are the ones from your animal sources, okay? Like eggs, very popular breakfast food. You know, then you got your fish, your turkey, your chicken, your pork, all, all of these. Now, these are, so, great ones. Now. Those ones you guys know. Now, horns you might not know as much. You got you got your Greek yogurt, okay? That's considered an animal product, right? Whey protein powder, also considered technically an animal product. And then I have some sort of, uh, let's say, avant-garde ones. You know, steak, very high in fat. Beef jerky, very high in salt. Selfish, some people are allergic. Some people's, uh, you know, practices don't allow them to eat that. Just, just limit those, but those are ones to have. Now, you got your non-animal proteins. Now, let me just show you some of the non-animal proteins, right? Edamame is great. Some people think soy um, messes with your estrogen, okay? Beans technically isn't just a protein, it's a carb, right? Plant-based protein powders are incomplete proteins, meaning they don't have all the amino acids, they're made. Um, nuts, high in fat, right? Tofu is soy, quinoa also is a carb, grains are also as a carb. So the moral of the story is non-animal protein products aren't what you'd call pure protein because they have carbohydrates, they have, you know, incomplete amino acids, they have, well, soy technically is, but, you know, some people just don't like soy, um, and that's why I put up here under different categories, so, like, beans might be under carbohydrates, okay, so very important you guys get your protein, mix those in, when we go to the worksheet, you're going to see ways you guys can add protein to every single meal. All right, carbohydrates, first of all, carbs do not make you fat, but you also don't have to eat carbohydrates. Your body can make carbohydrates. However, I highly recommend you do eat carbohydrates, especially if you wanna balance your blood sugar level. Now, I recommend one serving of carbohydrates. One serving, it says servings. <laughs> one serving of carbs per meal, okay? Now, the reason is that's gonna give you sustained blood sugar throughout the day. You have your carbs breakfast, your snack, your meal, right? You're having carbs throughout the day. Your blood sugar stays steady. So. You may or may not know, there are pretty much two kinds of carbs, even though there's really three. You got your good carbs, okay? And those are what we call your slow burning, your slow burning carbs, okay? Now, all of the carbs should be good carbs, okay? And that's your slow burning ones, and you'll see that in your preferred food list on the next page. Now, this is a big one here, and I get last this a lot. Fruit is a good carbohydrate. However, you should still limit fruit to one to two pieces a day, and the reason is, Fruit carbohydrates are a little bit different. They have what's called fructose in them. That's what they're made of, and that's a different kind of carbohydrate. They're slow burning, but they also, there's some other uh, medical things that go with high fruit diets. Now, you got your bad carbs, 
which you guys may or may not know, essentially they spike your blood sugar, right? So you eat your you eat your bad carb, your blood sugar goes up, right? And then it goes down, crashing, making you hungry, making you gain weight. You're really finding these in your table sugars, sucrose, right? And then your white flour products, you know, your baked goods. I recommend eliminating these all together. It might not be fully plausible, but it is definitely highly recommended. So let's take a look at the list. All right, so you got your good carbs, okay? So as I said, fruit limit, right? Two pieces a day, it's endless a snack. Now, your classic ones, oatmeal, great breakfast food, white or brown rice, folks. You can have white rice, okay? Any type of potato, right? These are not high, these do not spike your insulin. Quinoa, great, both protein and carb. Beans, also great, both protein and carb. Now, I put gluten-free or whole wheat bread, so it just depends if you eat gluten or not, either or. Yes, I put bread, bread is okay. Um, you got your whole wheat crackers, as long as they're low in fat. Notice this next one, low or no fat tortillas, right? You want that low fat. Um, unsweetened whole grain cereal, I like rice checks, hashtag sponsored, not sponsored. Now, we got your other ones, okay? Whole wheat pasta, I wrote limit because pasta is very dense. Like one square of pasta is a lot of carbohydrates, whereas one square of oatmeal is a lot less. Raw honey, also considered by some to be kind of a sugar. Um, you wanna limit that. Corn, also you want to limit because it has a very starch-like effect. And then your coconut sugar, I add that as a sweetener. Um, it also has a kind of a starchy, high GI effect, but it's just something you can sweeten with, okay? And you'll see in miscellaneous, all these other things you can sweeten with. So that's your carbs, folks. All right, the fats. This is where you make or break your diet, okay? First of all, it's not body fat, okay? I'm not talking about body fat, we're talking about dietary fat. Now, right here, fat has the what? Most calories. And look at this, limiting, 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 limiting your fat, okay? Now, fat is hidden in foods everywhere, and it's hidden in the form of oil. In the American diet, so much oil. If you can, try to completely remove all the oil from your diet. Now, one serving of fats per meal, right? And it really shouldn't come from oil. And the reason I try, I put the word try here is because you probably won't be able to remove the oil completely, but you should try. You should really try. Okay. Now, highly doubtful. You're going to have to add fat. I've almost never seen that. Um, how, because most of the food has oil in it. So yet again, if it wasn't so important, folks, I wouldn't write it 17 times. Try to eliminate oil from your diet, please, please. That includes olive oil, coconut oil, any seed oil, canola oil. Yes, I put olive oil. Why? Look right here. Look at this. Most calorie and least nutrition. Just, just honestly get rid of it. Just try to get rid of it. You can do it. You'll see miraculous results from it. Okay, so let's look at some of the fats. Okay, so you got your fats in your lean meats. Okay, like if you have some ribeye, wow, that's got a lot of fat. And it's got a lot of saturated fat, which I left out because I didn't want to get too much into that. That's why I put healthy in quotes. But um, fat from fish, great. You got your omega-3s. I also admitted talking about omega-3s um, just because I wanted to keep this very basic. But, you yeah, know, fat from fish. Your avocados, right? Everyone likes avocados, especially in California. But, right, the quantities, folks. And you will learn that in the portion section. Portions, right? Portions of these. Um, hummus is a great one, though it does have oil, um, so you want to limit that. Pumpkin and sunflower seeds, you know, your seeds, your flax and chia seeds, right? And then, now, look what I wrote here. I want you guys to see this. I wrote nuts, but I want you to limit nuts because it's really easy to overeat. Cheese, also very easy to overeat and high in not-so-healthy fats. Dark chocolate, same reason. I, easy to overeat and sort of has these unhealthy fats. Nut butters, should have put limit there, too. Same reason, right? Those are all really easy to overeat, okay? You don't really see people overeating on hummus um, <laughs> or chia seeds, but they will definitely overeat on some dark chocolate. Now, I put down here, there are many different types of fat, okay? You're gonna see things saturated, polyunsaturated, monosaturated. I mean, that's fine, okay? I just left that out because if you stick to these foods, the natural foods, you're gonna be eating healthy fats, assuming your diet isn't high in steak, okay? <laughs> but I put limit. Now look, I've included cheese and chocolate because people love them, and you're welcome. <laughs> but just limit those. Like I said, high caloric content. All right, everyone's favorite slash everyone's not favorite. The vegetable category. Now, I want you guys to see this right here. The essential part of any, any meal. Any meal. Any meal, right? They're going to fill you up. Fiber. You can get as many as you want, but you want to have a minimum. Let's get that in red. Minimum of two servings per meal. 
Now, look, I'm not going to list preferred vegetables because there's like a hundred that you could list. I've seen a lot. However, I have a few rules on the next page to help maximize your nutrition. And basically though, folks, this is the easiest rule. I, I got this from a doctor. He's great. Eat vegetables that are different colors. Boom. Different colors, different nutrients, and a nice high variety. And the one question I get asked a lot is, oh, with breakfast, how do I eat vegetables? And it's like, hey, you know, put some things in your eggs. Put some vegetables in your eggs. Oh, I only have oatmeal. Well, you can have some greens powder that's in the miscellaneous section that goes in there. Or, you know what I could do is I could have green juice, which is also in the miscellaneous section. So just, just stating the things. There's ways to get around the breakfast um, objection to having vegetables. All right, let's look at the rules. I love this rule. Run. Potatoes and corn. They do not count as vegetables. They are carbs, okay? They are considered starches. They are not vegetables. Do not tell me that you had vegetables and you ate corn or potatoes. I wrote peas. Those are technically kind of starches. I mean, that's being a little scrutinous, but just just, just be conscious. Um, and then two, like I said before, you know, eat as many different colors. Look at these nice colors. You got orange, you got purple, you got brown. So just eat as many different colors as possible. And my last favorite rule, Folks, do not cook them in oil, okay? Oh, I had some oil. I mean, I had some I had some asparagus, but I don't know why I logged in losing weight. Well, you put 600 calories of olive oil. So don't cook them or cover them in olive oil, right? You got to use cooking spray. But I'm not going to give cooking advice, but there's ways to prepare your vegetables without those things, okay? You guys are awesome. All right, folks, that pretty much finishes this part, but I want to take a look. The next part is completely dedicated to the miscellaneous section, okay? Because this is an area where a lot of people... There's a lot of lack of clarity, okay? So I'm gonna be talking about drinks, okay? You can see alcohol, you can see coffee. I'm gonna be talking about sauces, your condiments, right? Your dressings, all these different things. And then supplements, okay? Everyone asks about supplements. My thing with supplements is, if you're not eating ideal meals, don't ask me about supplements, okay? You need to be eating a healthy diet before you start taking supplements. And then also, sauces and drinks. This is a place where people add a ton of calories and they don't notice. So it looks like they're eating a really clean meal, but they're having these really, really bad drinks and sauces and it's driving the calories up. So in the next part, we're gonna be looking at the miscellaneous section in full depth. I will see you then. All right, welcome to part three, miscellaneous. Now you know it's important if I dedicate an entire section to drinks, sauces, and supplements. Now, most of us drink things in our water, totally fine. Most of us use sauces on a regular basis and almost everyone takes supplements. So I'm gonna explain these things in a simple fashion. You'll kind of see a pattern as we move through here. All right, so up first, drinks. And like I said, I wish I could tell you to only drink water, but that's not necessarily realistic. A lot of us need variety, including myself. And like I said, this is the pattern. Basically, there's two kinds of drinks and two kinds of sauces. Is You got ones with calories and you got ones without calories. So you can kind of guess which one may or may not be better, but really it just depends. So up first, we're looking at drinks with calories. Now look at the word here, limit. You wanna limit all the drinks with calories because it's an easy way to keep, just, just get the calories really high. Now look, these are kind of the rules that I have for, for drinks with calories. You really want to abstain from any drink with sugar in it. That's like those sweet teas, your sodas. I mean, a lot, a lot of those drinks that you, you'd be surprised, they have sugar in it, so check the back. Now the alcoholic drinks, you want to limit to three per week, not three per day, not three per every other day, three per week total. And yes, some people drink all three in one day, that's fine. No fruit juice is the next piece. And the reason I say that folks is fruit juice usually has a lot of sugar, even though it's different kinds of sugar, it's a very easy way to get a lot of calories. Like you could drink 300 calories of orange juice very easily. You would not be able to eat 300 calories of oranges. That's a lot of oranges. So it's just, you know, stay away from the fruit juice. And then this is what I add at the bottom. This is kind of like, those three are like, kind of like don't. Right, and then this one is consume low calorie drinks for variety and taste. I'm gonna show you guys some of those low calorie drinks. And it's a nice way to add some flavor and variety into your, essentially, your drinks and your meal. So now we're gonna look at drinks without calories, okay? Or low calories as we'll see, but you know, you need to watch out for a few things in the drinks without calories and that is your artificial sweeteners and caffeine. So, you know, I like to limit my drinks with artificial sweeteners to once a day. You know, only have one thing that has artificial sweeteners. So you're looking at your uh, diet Cokes, which also have caffeine. You're looking at your diet Snapples. You know, your all of your, anything that has the word diet in it is usually gonna have artificial sweeteners. And are, 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 are artificial sweeteners bad? Eh, just depends on the science that you follow. Caffeine, twice a day, okay? Preferably mornings only, that can kind of help with sleep. That's two cups of coffee. That's two cups of tea. That's 
two energy, well, two energy drinks. I don't know how many, two energy drinks might be a lot. But, you know, it's just important to note, you don't want to be drinking coffee all day, right? You don't want to be drinking caffeinated black tea all day. You just want to have essentially two servings, which will actually give you a nice amount or portion of caffeine and caffeine also depending on who you like to follow can be healthy and then consume all of the drinks in abundance as desired which you'll see is kind of herbal teas non-sweetened drinks infused water let's let's actually go to the list so you got your low calorie drinks now green juice you're like wait i thought you said no fruit uh, no fruit juice no, that's right it's not fruit juice it's green juice you're looking for ones that have low calories right and that the more green they are the lower the calories are going to be Coconut water, great option. Got a little bit of carbohydrates, but very healthy, high in electrolytes. Kombucha, not everyone likes to drink that as much, but you know, I prefer it. I feel it very, very delicious. Now, you got your red wine. Like I said, limit alcohol three per week. And then skim milk lattes. I don't know, people love lattes. You wanna get the skim milk though. That's gonna reduce the calories a lot. A whole milk latte is not a low calorie drink, okay? Now you got your no calorie drinks. Black coffee, if you can drink it black, that's fine. And if you can't and you like to put cream and sugar, don't use whole cream. Ah, so not good. That makes it not a low calorie. Actually, that takes it from the no calories into the high calories. Okay, and kind of like I said, infused water, great way. Green tea, I wouldn't consider that caffeinated, but it does have a little bit of caffeine. Black tea has caffeine, remember that. Herbal tea, drink as much as you want. Sparkling water, great option. Sometimes they have artificial sweeteners, sometimes they don't. Crystal light and diet Snapple. People like these a lot. That's why I've included them. Those have artificial sweeteners, and that's why they have limit next to them. So that kind of does it for drinks. Let's go ahead and look at sauces. I know some people, they can't eat food without sauce. So, you know, same thing. I wish I could tell you only to use seasonings. Also, that's probably not too realistic. And here the pattern emerges again. What do we have? We got sauces with calories and without calories. Now, I just kind of divided these into some hard, fast rules, and you see mostly that sauces with calories are going to have one or both of the following, oil and sugar, which you guys know from the other part, not the best thing, right? Not the best thing, oil and sugar. So if you can, which I think most of us can, is eliminate all sauces with calories. And we'll see some of these sauces with calories, but we're looking at, you know, your full fat salad dressing, your, you know, your barbecue sauces, your sugary ketchups. Just try your best. I, I, you can, you can do it. I know I definitely see it. And that actually will reduce your calories a lot and help you lose a little bit of weight. Okay, now you got your sauces without calories, and they're basically gonna have one or two things. They're gonna have a, either sodium, a lot of sodium, or artificial sweeteners. So, you know, you wanna limit these sauces. So you can see with sauces, as with drinks, you wanna either eliminate all sauces or limit sauces. So try to use a little bit of sauce. Uh, we're gonna look at some of, the, some of the options here. But, you know, in your sauces without calories, you got your, essentially your hot sauces, right? Your artificial sweeteners are the ones like, you know, no sugar ketchup and, um, some of these other things we're going to see on the next page okay so here's the sauces with calories if you have to have them olive oil right people use it as a dressing be careful okay that can you remember from part two oils can drive the calories up super hard you got your reduced sugar ketchup that is artificial sweeteners you know avocado oil mayonnaise or olive oil mayonnaise is another one those things are you know relatively lower in fat you got your honey sweetened barbecue sauce i don't necessarily recommend the ones with sugar in it and then you have your low fat italian or ranch which also could just be low fat salad dressing in general, okay? And then you got your sauces without calories. This is my favorite one right here, citrus. Woo, you know, put a lemon on there, um, put some lime on there. That's that's an amazing way to go. All your hot sauces, right? Those are gonna be high in sodium. And then vinegars, great. Mustards, great. Both of these things are essentially no calories. And then your calorie free dressings, you have to kind of look in the health food aisle. Uh, those will have artificial sweeteners and a decent amount of sodium, so just make sure to limit those okay so that kind of covers sauces now on to the supplements <sighs> supplements okay first of all look there's thousands of options there's just a ton of supplements and you know i kind of go on a, a little angry rant sometimes is like if you're not eating ideal meals like we shouldn't be thinking about supplements right supplements will not cure a bad diet so we got to focus on the ideal meal and the plates first before we get to supplements but i like to just make it easy right rather than recommend 17 different supplements which <laughs> some people do take 17 supplements right i just i just do these four okay whey or vegan protein powder which you guys will see when you do ideal meals we'll talk about more about protein powder and protein supplements very 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 strongly recommend you guys get some of that a multivitamin you know preferably plant-based but you know there's a lot of different multivitamins that are good fish oils which are pretty pretty 
pretty much proven to be a super effective. Don't believe that documentary on Netflix called What the Hell Fish Oils Are Good For You. And then last, uh, a calcium, magnesium, vitamin D. Uh, all is one pill. They have these. It's kind of a good supplement just to take. You know, most people need vitamin D, especially magnesium. Calcium, also very important. So those are the four that I recommend. I call them the core four because that's kind of where you want to start. If you want to add more, your doctor says more, your nutritionist says more, go ahead, add some more. It's totally fine, but essentially you're going to get more out of the plating and the portions than you are out of any supplements, okay? And then quantities, just recommended on the labels. Okay, so while with that, we're moving into the last part. We're going to be learning how to fill out, essentially, how to use our ideal meal. And what we're going to do is we're going to be taking the foods from the preferred food list, and we're essentially going to be plugging and chugging into the ideal meal. Now, these are going to be worksheets, so go ahead, print those worksheets out, and let's get started. Welcome to the fourth and final part of step two. We're going to learn how to implement the ideal meal using the preferred food lists which I'm gonna be flipping back and forth. Now I'm gonna move a little bit quickly because this is a very custom part, but I just wanna expose you to kind of how the process will work for you. So, you know, up first, let's say we're gonna eat breakfast and I got two servings of vegetables. And I had talked a little bit about vegetables and breakfast in a different video. But, so I'll cruise over to the vegetable list and I'm like, broccoli, frick, nah, okay, how about peppers? So I'm gonna have two servings of peppers and I'll put peppers here, let's use blue peppers, right? Now you can kind of assume what I would choose for protein, but I'll cruise over the protein list and I'll look down and go, okay, definitely not chicken or fish, turkey, ah, eggs. Eggs are on here twice. Okay. Eggs. Okay. So we're going to move over into eggs. We're going to put eggs in there. Boom. Okay. Now we're going to be looking at carbohydrates next. And you kind of get a feel like, okay, breakfast, like what are some carbohydrates I like to eat with breakfast? And I'm closing down, I could have oatmeal. Rice is an interesting one. Potatoes always good. You know, but here I see, oh, low-fat tortillas. So it's kind of like a breakfast burrito. Okay, I got my tortillas. Okay. Now, my one serving of fat. So I'm like, uh, okay, like, I'll cruise over to my fat list. Like, okay, what do I like to um, cook my eggs in? And I cruise down. I don't cook them in avocados. Though avocados you could have, uh, let's see, olive oil. I'm going to cook my eggs in some olive oil. And then I want my miscellaneous. So my miscellaneous I put over here. And I'm looking at dressings, okay, or sauce. So I like to use tapatio, hot sauce, okay? So from here, I'm gonna put, let's put that in a different color, tapatio in the miscellaneous. Okay, so from there, we have our breakfast, boom. And that's the ideal meal. And that, you know, that sounds pretty good. That's pretty good. All right, let's move over to meal number two, which is lunch, okay? I'm cruising down here. Uh, ooh, spring mix, okay? Boom, so I got my spring mix. I'm gonna put that in here. Just remember, you're gonna use the ID, you're gonna use the rule of hand to get your servings. All right, one to two servings of protein. What are some of the proteins that I like? And the first one that pops in my head is like, oh, looks like we're gonna be doing like a chicken salad. So I'll put in here chicken. Okay, now with a salad, what would be my serving of carbohydrates? You kind of move over to the carbohydrates list. You could have some fruit, maybe as like a side. Uh, maybe some put some beans in your salad. I'm looking at here though, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna have some corn. I'm gonna have a good amount of corn in my salad, kind of make it like a like a mixed salad with some corn. So I'm gonna put that over here. Good. Okay, so then we're gonna be looking at the fat. And the fat that I wanna choose, you know, I'm thinking about it, okay, like, you know, what are some fats that I like to put on my salad? Will be something that I like to use? Yeah, I could use olive oil, but look down here, folks. Mmm, I know what you love. You love some cheese. I'm gonna put some cheese on my salad, huh? Sounds pretty good. And then my miscellaneous is I'm probably going to need, you know, some form of dressing on my salad. So if I cruise over here to my dressings or sauces, I'm going to look down. Boom. Low fat. Eh, let's put low fat Italian because I don't want to have ranch and cheese. Same meal. And there's my lunch. If you had breakfast, lunch, what would be the last one? Probably want to have some dinner, okay? So I already had spring mix. I already had peppers. Maybe I want something hot. And I scroll down. I'm like... Now look what I'm gonna do here. Oh, I wanna have broccoli and I wanna have cauliflower. So I'll do one serving of each. So I'll have, you know, one, one, you're gonna have your broccoli and your cauliflower. Okay, what kind of protein? I had chicken, I had eggs. You're like, okay, what I like to have with my vegetables? You're like, okay, if I'm feeling really healthy, you know what I could do essentially is have some fish, but you know, I'm really kind of feeling some steaks, some top sirloin, or you can add your own, right? You can add your own. So I'm gonna put in some sirloin over here. Boom, okay, it's my protein, one to two servings. Now, my carbohydrate. Let's have some potatoes, you know, steak and potato kind of, kind of gal, kind of person right here. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna put in the potatoes, one serving of potatoes and now i'm looking at my fat okay i'm like okay got my vegetables got my potatoes you know i cook them in olive oil i already had olive oil 
I could put some cheese in my vegetables. I already had cheese. So I'm like cruising over to my fats list. And I'm like, you know, what could I add here? You know, I'm thinking, ah, da, 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 da. Oh, lean meat. So it's my sirloin actually my account. I'm like, nah, I just don't see anything that I want. So I want to add my own kind of fat. Okay, and I'm like, okay, you know, what I like in my vegetables, what I like my steak, what's something that I like to add kind of as a side? You're like, you know what I like to put? Butter on my steak. Ah, don't eat butter. Well, if it's your one serving of fat, you can have butter in limited quality. So I'm gonna put some butter on my steak. And then I'm over here looking at miscellaneous, right? I'm looking at my non-water drinks. Ah, any alcohol, I'm gonna have a glass of wine with my dinner. So if you look at that, folks, that's your meal plan. That's ideal meal. That's you getting a lot of nutrients. That's you eating proper portions and have proper calories. Now, what do you notice? This looks pretty good. Like, this is a pretty good meal plan. You got variety, you're having burritos, having a good salad with cheese, you're having steak and wine for dinner. This is doable, right? This is sustainable. This is something that you guys can last with because the foods are good. And the options are essentially endless. You guys can be filling in a lot of different things. But the key is, folks, you're just moving, right? through the plate, right? And you're plugging and chugging. You're going to your list, right? And you're picking and you're going back and you're filling these things in. That's the whole point. You know, it, it's, a, it's a plug and chug method. It, it's, it is simple. It's very effective. And look, you can have variety. Can't drive the home enough variety. So before you go out today, let me show you how we can put that into our meal schedule. So whichever meal schedule you chose from part one, what you do is, let's say I chose this meal one, right? I have my breakfast. Boom, that goes on my meal schedule and I had it between seven and eight. And then I come back over here and I go, okay, meal two. That goes on my meal schedule, right? Meal two, I had it between one and two. And then on meal three, my steak and wine dinner. Boom, right here. That goes into here, meal three, which I had between, let's go six and seven. And now look folks, the snack. And this is the part we can do right here at the end, the snack. And you come over here to your snack list and you're like, oh, okay. like. It's closed at night, like what I want to eat. Uh, I already had a lot of these. Boom! Didn't really have too much food. So I'm going to take my dry fruit. I'm going to put that in my snack. And since it's a nighttime snack, I want to do it at 10, between 10 and 11. And that's how you go throughout your day. And you plug in, kind of what I was saying before, you plug in your meals into your meal schedule. So with that, folks, that is going to conclude part four of step two. And you guys are almost done. We're just going to move on to the last step, which is making it a habit.